This here is the multi-board tile generator. It is the simplest, quickest, and easiest way to create your own custom-shaped tiles and stacks for your own multi-board needs. Let me show you how to go about getting it and how to use it. This right here is the multi-board tile generator listing, and if you're a supporter and specifically a multi-maker, you get access to all of the generators that come with multi-board, and right here it would say download all. When you click that, what you're gonna get is a .blend file, and if you don't know what that is, that is a Blender file. Now don't worry, you don't need to know Blender, and if you have no idea of Blender, let me just give you a quick little glimpse. It is a free, open source, incredibly powerful 3D modeling program. You don't need to know it, you just need to click download, make sure you have it on your computer, so that you can go ahead and use it for this tile generator. Now, I would specifically say use 4.2 and above with this tile generator to make sure it works just as great as it does for me myself. And then once you've downloaded the tile generator and open it up, what you're gonna get is this file right here. Now, I get it, it looks very complicated, but I, trust me, trust me, trust me, I've made this super simple. Just select the tile, you want to change the size of it, change the size of it here. You want to change the type of it, go over to tile type. There's a side type, there's the corner type, and then there's the custom type, which we'll touch in just a moment. Let's change this back to a core. I'm going to change this to maybe, let's say a seven by 10. Why not? Something crazy like this. And let's say I wanted to cut a hole in this. You'll see that I have here where it says cut away. I click cut away and I now have a hole in it. There is this cube that is the cutaway cube. You can click this cutaway cube, move it around right here, put it wherever it is. You can change the dimensions of it as well. But then once you're happy with what it is you have in front of you, and that is exactly what you're wanting, just make sure you select the tile and click prep to print. Because right this minute, take a look. There is no threads or anything there. This is the super low poly version. So you gotta click prep to print, give it a quick moment, and now it has threads and it's ready to go. So let's export this out. Make sure you select just the tile. Then you're gonna go over to file, then go to export, and then go to STL. And then be sure that you click selection only. If you don't click selection only, it's going to give you the cube as well as the tile. And then it's gonna look like the tile with a cube in the middle of it, and it gets a little bit confusing. All you have to do is rename it however it is you want, hit export STL, and you're ready to go. Now let's talk about those custom tile types. I'm gonna turn off prep to print. I'm gonna click the drop down here and go to custom, and I'm gonna turn off cutaway for now. Now with custom tile type selected, all of these toggles are now activated. So you can just click and drag and they'll all turn on. You can just turn some on, turn some off, do whatever it is you're wanting. Maybe I'll drop this down as well a little bit like that. And there we go. It is now a custom tile that I really wanted to make for some reason. I'm gonna click prep to print. It's going to be ready to go. Once again, file, export, STL, selection only, and you're ready to go. Okay, the other fun thing about the tile generator is making your own stacks. So for the sake of it, I'm gonna change this over to core. Just be aware that when you have this in any other setting, all of these toggles no longer work. Okay, so from here, when you've got the stack method, there are two different types. There is multi-material and ironing. Now, if you don't know what the print settings are and the information about all of those, don't worry about it. I have another video for both of these methods and they're gonna be down below and I'll give you all the links to them in just a moment. So first, let's talk about ironing. I'll just click, turn that on, and it's right here. Now I've got prep to print going on. That might've taken a bit longer for you if you still had this on. So I'm gonna turn it off. So it's nice, quick moving about. So here, there's the stack spacing. I recommend 0.2 for ironing, but right here I have my recommended spacing. Multi-material, 0.4 when it comes to ironing 0.2, but you can change the height of this to be whatever it is that you want it to be. So I'm gonna to go to 0.4 now, because I wanna change this now over to multi-material, which adds a little interface layer between all of these lovely boards, boards, tiles, and it also adds these little towers right here. Now, there is a little bit of extra complexity when you're doing multi-material printing, which is when you go and turn on this cutaway, and let's say we have the cutaway somewhere like that, well, that tower isn't touching the tile, and we really need that to touch the tile because it helps with the positioning and spacing and all the clever 
clever trickery that we're doing inside of the slicer. So we have to be able to move the multi-material tower here to be where it is. We want it to be to connect up with the tile. So I can just move it along, move it, let's say somewhere over there. And then once this is ready to go, I'm just gonna move myself over here. I'm not going to fast forward this in any way. I just wanna show you that it can take a quick, a little moment sometimes to prep to print because we're now processing four tiles that are custom shapes ready to go. So I'm going to click this now. We're waiting right this minute. And then once we wait, I would say it's about five, ten seconds sometimes, depends on the size of your stack. There you go. It is then ready to go. Once again, just select it, go file, then export, go to STL, make sure it's selection only rename it whatever it is you want and click export STL. Now I did mention about those print settings. So all those print settings, they're in another video because I wanna make sure I give you the best information possible. And if I get any new hints and tips for all of them, just know that what I personally believe is that the ironing method is probably a better method to go with. And then the multi-material method is probably one to go and grab a hold of if you have multi-material printing or you're finding that your ironing is a little bit too hard or you're not really happy with how the bottom side of the tile is looking. But that there is the tile generator. Thank you so much for watching and thank you so much for supporting Multiboard. And till next time, keep making.